So today I want to go over um, debugging the Node CLI tool. A few people talked to me about it at the last Free Code Camp meetup I was at, and they had a few questions about it. So I figured I'd go over it really quick here. Um, so I'm using Node 8.9.1, which is the latest LTS. Um, and for this version of Node, and the more recent ones, we'll just use the Node Inspect command. And on the left here, you'll see just a really simple app that I'm using. It's using some utility functions I wrote. Uh, delay is a promise uh, wrapper around set timeout. So I'm here going to wait for a period of time. We'll lower this a bit for now. Um, taking the millisecond value that was given to delay and writing it out as seconds to the console. And if you go into index here, so this is in the lib index folder you can see here. Um, so I have the delay function and the milliseconds to seconds wrapper. So what I'm going to go over here is we'll start up the node inspect. So you notice we'll get some output here right away, letting us know that the debugger is listening um, and on which port and address, and we can ignore that for now. The one thing we'll notice though is we're saying break on start in app JS line one. With the app JS line one we're seeing here doesn't really correspond to what we're seeing in our own code. This is just because Node is wrapping our code and giving us access to the some data we actually use in our Node code, like the require function, the module, object, exports, um, file name, dir name. And I'll show you really quickly, uh, using the help command, we can see what's made available here to us. And we see the REPL command says we can enter a debug REPL that works like exec. Uh, we'll ignore exec for now. But this is basically entering the read eval print loop that you're used to when you type node at the command line to evaluate expressions. So we can do the same thing here. And we can actually check out some of those variables that were made available to us. So export, exports has nothing. Uh, require should be a function, and it is. Uh, module, there's some, some information about that as well. Uh, file name, is a location on my system, their name. So pretty handy stuff, and we can we'll use this for evaluating um, some of our own code. So you can press Control C uh, to switch back to the debug prompt. So you notice when you go into REPL, the prompt changes, it tells you Control C to leave. And if we go to Help again, we'll take a look at a couple of these commands to get started. Um, we'll notice Run, Restart, and R are all aliases to run the application or reconnect. Um, continue and Next, Step and Out used to kind of travel the code. Um, list will show us where we are. Um, set breakpoint is kind of like uh, setting points in our code where we'd like the debugger to pause. Um, and we can clear them, get a list of them. Um, scripts lets us know the scripts that have been loaded so far. Um, our scripts anyway. And so, so far app.js has been loaded, so you notice access to libindex isn't even there yet. And so let's start with list. If we look and just uh, execute it like that, we'll notice it's it's a function. And it takes the number of lines in either direction you want to see. So if I did list 1, you notice a very minimal view. Um, it can't go any lower than line 1, but it can go to line 2. Uh, say we want to see some more code, let's say 15 in either direction. So you notice we're able to see the whole file now. And if we take a look at the next command, it says we'll continue to the next line in the current file. So let's use that. We use the alias n. So we're at the require call now. I'll step over that as well. So at this point, we should have both our scripts loaded. We'll check that, and we do. And now we're at the delay function. So how do we get into delay at this point? So let's use help. And so we notice we have continue to resume execution. Uh, next to continue to the next line. That's not what we're after. So step into potentially entering a function. So let's use the alias s. So you notice we're actually in uh, limit uh, limb index line six uh, right here. So on the new promise. So if we step into again, so now we notice. So you notice the green highlighting. We're on the new promise uh, expression and set timeout. So we're about to enter set timeout. Now you notice, like, oh, where the heck are we now? So in timer.js 426, we're getting into internal code of node here. And so you have to be careful that without without setting breakpoints or using the debugger statement in your source code, 
you can really quickly find yourself, um, especially with asynchronous code, in a place where it's, it's difficult to even know what's going on, like which code is ours and which is nodes or some other library's code. So basically, if we check help, we also saw there was an out command to leave the current fun function. So let's try that. So we're we're back at export delay. And you notice it's part of the expression being evaluated. It's kind of hard to see here, but you'll notice that brace there is highlighted green. So if we step out again, we should be returning. So right there, we can tell that by the semicolon. Let's step out again. Now we're back out into the then. So this uh, entering this won't really behave the way you think, like, oh, we want to get to the um, uh, callback for then, but it's going to go to the then code of a promise first. So let's try that, we'll step. Now we're back inside, we're in another uh, node core file like bootstrap node, line 315. Well, I don't want to be in here, let's try out. So now, let's get a sense of where we are again. It looks like our code, but then we can tell, oh yeah, app.js. And we are at the cat catch statement of the uh, promise. So what if we do next now? So it looks like we're end end of the wrapper function next again. So we're now we got back into node core code. Uh, what if we tried continue? So you notice I, I probably entered event loop code there. You know it's not really important to what I'm trying to test in my own code. So how am I supposed to um, set these wait points and breakpoints, if you will? So if we type help, there was a set breakpoint or sb alias. And let's say we want to get into, um, let's say we want to get to line five where the console log is happening. So SB is a function, and what it takes is the uh, script as a string and then the line number. So what we're going to do at this point, because we've already finished, if I were to do uh, something even like continue at this point, it would, it would prompt me to run and to start the app again. So we'll use R, which is going to break on line one. And we remember we have these scripts loaded, so let's go to sbapp.js. And we said line 5. So notice we actually have some confirmation here that the breakpoint was set on line 5. If we do list, you can also see it another way. Now we see an asterisk on the uh, line 5 where the breakpoint is going to be. So rather than step through using next line at a time, let's use continue to get to uh, either a breaking point or the end of the file or end of the code. So it should see a wait, and I would see the 1.25 seconds was waited, and we're at the console log now, and maybe I want to get to the millisecond to seconds function. So if I tried S, we know next we'll step to the next line, continue should go to the end of the code, which is going to print the uh, millisecond to second conversion. So if I step, I'm going to find myself in uh, bootstrap node again, try listing some code around me. So set global console. So I'm probably in something to do with the console log I'm calling. Let's try to step out. So now you notice we're in the highlighted milliseconds to seconds. I do want to step into that. And now we'll notice we're actually on line 14 where the factor is being calculated. I want to, let's step over this line. And maybe I want to know the value of uh, factor at this point. So let's use that uh, command REPL we saw in help here to enter the debug REPL. And let's try factor. So notice we're actually getting value for factor. Uh, what about MS from the outer code that we would have been in here? So this is also uh, available to us as well, the MS from the other uh, app.js file um, because of the scope. So let's do a list again. And at this point, we'll notice, because um, I'm in the debug REPL, I have to remember control C to get out. And let's try to step out. So now we'd be at the, the actual log function. And let's do a next. And we notice we're stepping next, actually console log the contents, which is right. And let's just continue to let the uh, uh, code finish. So wait for waiting for the debugger disconnect. So I can check my breakpoints, see what I've got available to me. But I'd like to, rather than do that step in, step out, step in business I did to get into milliseconds to seconds, I'd rather just get to that file. So we know it was in libindex.js and if we check there the line we're interested in was 14. Let's use that. So you notice it'll say uh, that we need to start the app again because we let it run to completion 
and we'll notice the no breakpoint. So we'll do the R. Make sure the breakpoints weren't set. So let's use the I'm using the up and down to travel the history, and let's reset that. So it says it's not loaded, but the fact that we're running it will actually store the breakpoint. We can check that. So notice on uh, breakpoint one, uh, lib index line 14. So let's do our continue. So we should get into the then. Let's do continue again, which would jump us into milliseconds to seconds. And that's exactly what it does. So if I step next and I return, I'll return the actual value, continue, and we got the proper output and waiting for the debugger to disconnect. So basically when we get to that point, we need to always remember to rerun the app. Um, but another way I want to show you how to do this, if we just control C, um, and just stop that. And if we go back to the source code, another way we can plant these uh, breakpoints is using the debugger statement here. So we can go here, let's do it here as well where we had it before. And we'll actually get them the, the uh, session breaking literally on that line. So let's do node inspect app again. You continue. Now you notice we actually broke on the debugger statement. So if I were to do next, that would be on the console log. If I do continue, let's get into the milliseconds to seconds. Do next, next again. Make sure everything's working with the REPL and factor. Looks good. Let's get out with control C and we'll run to continue, run to completion. And there you go. So the, basically I just wanted to quickly show you how you can use um, the uh, node inspect command to use the CLI to do some file traversal. This isn't really the way I, or probably most people would do in, in a production environment. You know, something like the Chrome inspector is, is much handier or VS Code's debugging extensions or Atoms. Um, and I'll cover that in another video. Uh, there's a quick intro to how to use the, the actual node app, uh, terminal application to do a little basic debugging.